Hello and welcome back. This is the second installment of the visual effects series of videos sponsored by Shuttle Computer. I'm Kelly Lee Myers. I was the visual effects consultant on Battlestar Galactica seasons two and three. Today I've recorded a video uh, just featuring a single Viper from the show, Viper Mark 7. It had around about 201,000 polygons in it and we were flying it around and checking out how uh, the card and the system uh, that I have here from Shuttle was working. Again, let's recap on what that uh, computer uh, specification is while we bring in Lightwave and we load up the, the Pegasus. I'm just going to load the scene here really quickly and then talk to you uh, about what the specifications of this machine are. Let's go and pop up that Pegasus. All right, when that comes in, uh, again, let's recap. This is a shuttle XPC uh, available from Shuttle Computer. It comes with a 920 uh, Phenom 2. Uh, processor from AMD, so that's a Phenom 2 quad core running at 2.8 gigahertz. It's got 4 gigabytes of RAM in it, uh, running at uh, uh, 800 megahertz. It's DDR2 RAM, and we have the Sparkle video card in here, which is a GTX 275 chip uh, with just under 1800 megabytes of DDR3 video RAM. And in the other videos, we were getting some fantastic performance both out of the card and out of the machine. But that's just for a small little Viper. Let's see how this thing fares up when we actually work with one of these larger capital ships like the Galactica, or in this case right now, in this video, the Pegasus. So that the Pegasus is on its way to loading in here, uh, keep in mind I'm loading it over a network, it's going to dump all that texture information into OpenGL, which is of course going to be sent to the card. And in a moment here, we'll get the Pegasus to pop up. And when I set the scene file up originally, I set the texture maps to be represented by OpenGL at 4K. So this is going to be a little bit... Oh, there it is. Actually, that's a little bit faster than I thought it was going to be. All right. Now, one of the other things uh, just to note here is that uh, I have a bounding box threshold limit set for objects over 500,000 polys in total in the scene. So right now, um, when I have an interactive update, when I'm moving around the ship, anything uh, that the scene... Uh, says is over 500,000 polys uh, in total, it's not going to display it in real time. I'm just going to do that so that the card isn't chugging away, even though I could probably increase that. That's just a fair number that I've uh, arbitrarily chosen uh, to get these demonstrations done. But we can increase that number or decrease that number uh, as an artist working to give you better results for performance or for display of what you actually need to see. Now right now we've got the Pegasus in here. It's looking pretty snazzy. Let's uh, start to fly around it. Like, look at how the performance is. Let's just maximize the screen here. Again, I have to remind you that I have two video uh, displays set up and connected to this card. One of them is just off to the side and the other one here of course is featuring Lightwave and we've got the Pegasus in it. But there are two uh, video displays connected to this card and both of them are running at 1920 by 1200. So very, very quickly I can fly around the, the Pegasus and do just about whatever I want in terms of OpenGL and then the moment when I let go it's going to redraw the ship. Uh, again, here's that bonding box uh, level threshold. Let's increase it to 800,000 polys. Now that's still nowhere near uh, what the size of the Pegasus is. You can start to see that I get some redraw delay, but it's still really, really good. Uh, the reason why that's really, really good is because this ship is just over 390,000, or sorry, 3.9 million polygons. So that's uh, quite significant. And it's also got 53 images in there for total object memory, just the object memory before the images of over 1,600 megabytes. Now, there's also uh, 667 surfaces in here and over 597 lights. Now, with OpenGL and Lightwave, I'm not going to be able to see anything beyond um, eight OpenGL lights, but I am displaying it uh, with 4K image resolution maps. If I wanted to improve the performance there, I could set this to 1K. It's going to take a moment to blow all those textures away and then reload it uh, with 1K resolution into the OpenGL uh, portion of the uh, software and then feed that information to the card. So it's done that and we've got you know, really 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 good performance. 
I have no real issues or concerns about that whatsoever. It's very, very nice. I'm just going to pause here for a second and replace the batteries in my mouse. Because they're dying. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I just had to replace the batteries in my mouse as I had not replaced them probably about a year and a half and they were dying there and they actually were uh, giving me kind of a, a choking feeling as I was moving the mouse across the mouse pad. Now that they're back in there and they're fully uh, charged, you can see that I've got uh, great performance in the OpenGL display. Uh, really no issues there whatsoever for moving around here and then the second I left my uh, finger off the mouse it draws in the rest of those polys. Let's go back to the display here and increase this again. Uh, I think I'm going to have to increase this well into the 4 million poly range. So that's 40,000, 400,000, 4 million. All right, let's hit return there. And we'll just minimize this for a second. All right, and let's move around here. Now we can start to see that the card is having some difficulty doing this. But this is actually probably the best performance that I've had on a... Uh, consumer level card. I have done uh, a little bit of work recently on some of the quadras uh, from uh, NVIDIA, uh, but those are significantly more expensive than uh, the Sparkle card, and it is actually handling this stuff really well. So we'll take a look around about the ship. You can see all that texture detail, uh, just even an OpenGL. And you can see how many different objects are on there, all the nernies or greebles as they call them in the industry. And you can see, even with the polygon threshold limit set to 4 million, we're still able to move around it and still be somewhat relatively productive if we were working on something. Well, that's a little bit more than I would like it to be. So we're going to bring up that display uh, settings again. We're going to set this back to, uh, let's call it 1 million. All right, so that's that's a lot better. That's much better.